Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be my final top three favorites in every category video. And today we're talking eyes. Welcome to everybody watching today. If you're into eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of your makeup the way I am, then hopefully this video is up your street because today we are going to be chatting about my top three favorites in every category. And today we're doing the eye the eye version of this video. I've done base, I've done lips, I've done cheeks, and now we need to talk everything in this section of the um, <laughs> of the uh, makeup look that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go over like eyeshadow primers, and I'm gonna go over favorite palettes in different categories, and like liners and mascara and all of that goodness is going to be in today's video. And in case you're new here, it may be good to know that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which greatly skews my makeup preferences. And because I have been buying, trying and reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I kind of have some very strong favorites as well. So if you would like to join the Snow Angel Club, then definitely click subscribe down below. Let's get to these favorites. So before we get started, there are two announcements I need to make. Step number one, I'll be cutting the video into chapters, so if you just want to watch one part, you can. Secondly, for a lot of these videos, I've done a B-roll of swatches, and today I won't be able to do that because it's really, really dark today, and I sadly don't have any time to go back to this because I'm starting a new job this December. Like, it starts December 1st, so I'm pre-filming a lot, and I just won't have time to, especially with the kind of weather we're having and it being December and just, there just not being a lot of, like, daylight to begin with in this month. Um, that I don't think I'll have time to sit down before this video goes up and to do all of the swatches for you. So I do apologize, but luckily this is the category where I have consistent swatches up with so many things. And category number one will be, I think, the category that most people use all the time, and that's mascara. And mascara-wise, I have a very strong preference for the drugstore. My favorite mascaras are quite affordable, um, I have stopped using, I, when did I stop using high-end mascaras? I think 10 years ago, really. I only used them for a hot minute because I just found out that with mascara, in order to keep your eyes safe, you need to replace them quite often. And if I pay like 30 plus euros for a mascara, I want it to last. But just the nature of the product and how close it goes to your eyeballs, it's just something you need to be very careful with, I think. So that's why I tend to replace my mascara every two to three months, depending on how long they last, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, the Maybelline Falsies Lash Lift is my favorite. This one is empty. Like all three of these I've taken from my Beauty Empty stash, which is a video I'll be doing in 2023. Yeah, maybe Maybelline Falsies Lash Lift. I like volumizing mascaras over lengthening ones, by the way because I have a lot of length already, so it's not something my lashes need. And I also don't use a lash curler, because I just, I have naturally wavy hair. You can't see it right now, because I, I got a haircut, and they completely smooth out my hair. Um, so yeah, you can, uh, you will see some other videos going live this month. I'm not sure when this goes live, um, but yeah, you will see my natural hair texture in a future video again, for sure, because I can't do this myself. Like, this is hairdresser stuff. I can't do this. So then we have my favorites by Essence and Catrice. So the false, um, the Essence Lash Princeless, and this is the false lash effect in the green tube. That's, that's the way I always refer to this. It's really lovely. The only problem with Essence Mascara, it doesn't last a long time. I find Essence Mascara that like this one I feel okay, like this lasts like six weeks or so. Sometimes I can stretch it to eight, um, but this I can keep in a shop my sash for like a month or two and then I need to replace it. I'm currently wearing the I Heart Extreme from Essence and that's just a right old mess. I don't know what they put into that stuff, but for me that dries out within a month, which I don't find worth it. This I feel I get a little bit more wear time out of, so that's why I like this one better, and this I've repurchased many, many times. And anyone who's been with me for a while knows the Glam and Doll Waterproof Mascara by Catrice. I use this to top over any I like any mascara I use, no matter the price point, because this I feel separates my lashes and it makes every mascara I have a little bit more waterproof. 
Um, by itself, I dislike this really, really a lot. So I, you, I, the way I do it is I put a volumizing mascara on first, just on the top lashes, and then I use this to coat over it, and then I dab it onto my lower lashes, and I experience little to no smudging throughout the day. I can walk through a rainstorm and my mascara will not have run and I don't look like a panda. And that's all due to this little guy. And it's like four euros at the drugstore. Another basic eye step is primers. So I have a couple here, I was like, yeah, these, are, these would be my three favorite primers. Milani eyeshadow primer. Mine is very, very low, but I still have a couple from Lorac that I also still need to use up, which are fine, like they're good enough. And I have one from Kaleidos that I need to try. So I have enough eyeshadow primer, but I know that if those don't work for me, or if the, some of them have gotten old, or once I've gone through those, this is the one I go back to. Sure, I like the shadow insurance from Too Faced. I've used two of those up in the past. I've used up several of the Urban Decay primer potions. Those are like OGs. Like when I found Urban Decay primer potion, oh, that's what happened to my makeup game. It just, it was life-changing. It was life-changing. But the Milani one is far more affordable than either of those two, and I feel it gets the job done just as well. So that's why the Milani one needs to get a mention. Over here, it's a little more expensive than in the US. I think in the US, this is like, what, seven or eight dollars? Over here, it's $12.95, which, you know, all things considering, it's not super cheap, but it's also not very affordable either. So, And you guys know, MAC Paint Pot and Paint Painterly, like, this is my third one, I think? Like this one, I use it every single time to create a base layer for my shadow, not to stick to. I use this to stick down shadow and this to block out my lid. So I find that this, with my kind of eye shape, it doesn't stay put. So I need the other primer to make sure this stays put. And then I set this with a cream colored eyeshadow and then I feel my eyeshadow looks blended and vibrant and it stays put all day and I have no issues. So MAC Paint Pot and Painterly has been with me for a while. I think I go through one every two years. And then we have the NYX Jumbo P Pencil in Milk. This is one where I had completely used up the tip and with these, they're just incredibly difficult to, like they should, this still, still doesn't have a twist up. Like, Everybody's been saying for like more than a decade that they need to make this a twist up pencil, but yeah. Milk by Mi NYX is just such a great base. Like if you feel that your eyeshadow doesn't show up well enough, milk. I repurchased it after my tip had rubbed up because I was like, I can't live without this. If I have something that's really light, like pastel shades or like those kind of shades that may have trouble showing up, milk by NYX all the time. And brows, I'm just going to go over all of the boring bits first, you guys. But for brows, I have some Essence and Catrice and Soap and Glory bits for you. OG subscribers know, make me brow, Essence, Blondie Brows. This is the one thing I always go back to. I've tried so many other brow gels that are raved about, that so many people love. And I like them okay enough. But this is the king of, the, this is, this is the queen bee for me. Like... It's cheap, it's cheerful, it lasts a long time, not just seeing your brows, but also before it expires, because that's my biggest pet peeve with brow mascara. Like regular mascara, they tend to go bad really quickly, where one day you just open it up and you go like, ooh, that smells. And I've had that happen to me with Benefit, with Elf, with so many things I've tried over the years. And this one, I can happily use for four to six months, and I can use it up completely that one day I'm like, oh wait, there's hardly anything on the brush anymore. Oh, I've used it up. Whereas with other brow mascaras, I have the issue that they just go bad before I can use them up or they come in clear packaging and it starts to look really weird after a while or they tend to get really gloopy before I can use them up or like the texture just change. So even if I like the way they look in my brows, I've always had issues like that with brow mascara. So this product, I just love and adore for that. And the shade Blondie Brows is perfect for my shade of eyebrow. And then I have two pencils here. So I'm a eyebrow pencil kind of girl. I've tried everything. I've tried powders, waxes, soaps, 
pomades, like I've had it all over the years and just the easiest for me because my brows don't need a lot to look okay like I just pop in a little bit of like brow pencil to like fill in some of the gaps and then I use a brow gel and that's it in fact I've had my brows done not too long ago I always get them done professionally because I cannot keep up with the like like I'm blonde but my brow hairs for some reason it's like blonde 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 and then black and then I just have this really dark brow hair somewhere in the middle of my lid and my brows. Literally, like, this is why I never blend my eyeshadow up super duper high. Because my brow actually comes down to here. I The last time I went in to get my brows done, the lady was plucking eyebrow hairs off of my, like, right here in my crease. That's how far down my brows grow. <laughs> like, it's... It's terrible, so I'm not a hairy person at all, but my brows, for some reason, just kind of live a life of their own. So that's why I tend to not do too much, because... And I also don't get them done as often, because because a lot of my brow hairs go uh, like grow out blonde first and then darken over time, it can be like, it can look a little weird if I get them done too, qu uh, too often. Um, so yeah, the Catrice Slimmatic Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. I have two of these. I thought I didn't have one in backup and then I bought a new one because I thought I didn't have it. But yeah, this one in the shade Ash Blonde is one of my favorites. Catrice does really good eyebrow pencils, I feel, more so than brow mascara. But my favorite all-time brow product is the Soap & Glory Archery Brow Pencil. I have to buy this in the UK because sadly my shade, which is just called Blonde, isn't available from the Dutch Boots website. What's up with that? They sell all the other shades, save for this one. I don't know. Um, so this is just one of those like mechanic pencils. The um, uh, Catrice one is the same way where you twist it up and it has a spoolie on the end. It's what's in my brows today. That's the shade of brow. Since we're talking about pencils, eyeliner pencils, I have a couple here. I'm not a big pencil person. Mainly because I don't have that much lid space. Eyeliner is just not really something I go for. And if I want to create the look, I love the effect of using eyeshadow as eyeliner. That's just me. I used to be a big, big fan of lining my waterline with eyeliners like this. And I've pretty much completely stopped doing that. I still love these kind of eyeliners when I can like smudge them along the lash line and then use shadow on top of it so that you create a bit of a base, which is why one of my picks today is also an eyeshadow stick. Sadly, no longer available, but the Catrice uh, Liquid Metal eyeliners are my favorite. I have four of these. Like, you can just tell from the tip how well worn this is. Um, this is so, so great. And I believe also the, sh the shade is rubbed off, of course, but it was like Hazel Lahoff or something like that. Um, it's the, the perfect brown eyeliner, and if we're doing brown liner anywhere with a pencil, it's going to be brown in my case. So that's my favorite. It's really rich and creamy, and I love how that pencil, I can just like blink on top of it and then just rub it in between my lashes, and I've got a good look every time. Quite new to me. I haven't officially used this yet, but I just think the concept is so great that I have to give a shout out to the Kaleidos Multichrome Eyeliners. When I saw that Kaleidos was coming out with multi-chrome eyeliners, I was like, oh, that's not going to be my product. Because if very often these things are made as liquid eyeshadows or like a liquid liner. And I, me and liquid liner, we'll get to liquid liner in a minute. But I just can't deal. I just can't deal with liquid liner. It just, it's always messy. I always mess up the entire eye look. And I need to start over again. So I was so happy to see that these were pencil liners. They're very soft though, and they're very prone to breakage, I have found as I was swatching these. So I need to be very careful with these. By the time you're watching this video, I will have tried them because I plan on roping this into some of my Kaleidos palettes that I'm trying out this December. And finally, I need to give a shout out to Kiko. Their eyeshadow sticks are amazing. I have been told that these are a straight up dupe for Laura Mercier because they are made in the same factory. And these are like, what, $7.99? I actually, I placed the Kiko order for Black Friday and I got a couple of new ones because I wanted to try some of their newer shades. But this is my favorite one. It's shade 38, which I believe is called Golden Taupe. 
This is like the easiest one and done shadow you're ever gonna find. Like, ever. If you need a one and done shadow, Kiko eyeshadow sticks are the best. They also do some really lovely smoky shades and like the um, NYX uh, jumbo pencil, they also do some like really light and skin tone kind of shades that you can use to block out your lid if that's what you want to do. So the Kiko eyeshadow stick line has a lot to offer. Some of the shades I have are no longer for sale, unfortunately, but they are great as a base or to smoke things out or to just like create that messy base that you can layer other things on top of. That's what they're really good for. But this shade I tend to just use as is. Just tap it on, use your finger to blend it out, maybe a bit of a brush moment and you're good to go. I told you I would talk about liquid liner as well. Yes, I do own liquid liner. A brown and a black and Essence does both of them. So that's why I don't have any other. Now, I'm gonna have to be very honest with you. In that same Kiko order that I just mentioned, I found out that Kiko is currently doing eyeliners, as in like felt tip eyeliners, in blue, brown, and green. So I wanted to try those. So they weren't very expensive, so I did put them in the order to see how they would work. The reason why I don't have a lot of felt tip eyeliners anymore is because they tend to dry out. Um, but I thought, you know, if they're in like fun, colorful shades, it might work. But yeah, in terms of liquid liners, the Essence Liquid Ink are the best ones. This was a recommendation from my my best friend's sister who um, I did her makeup for her wedding day and she was always doing her eyeliner and she wanted to do it herself and she was using this. So like I was always using the this one, which was far more expensive, but then I found out that Essence does the same one and Essence actually came out with the brown one in the past year or so. So I'm really happy with that because I just prefer brown eyeliner over blacks. But I think gel liner, if you are someone who struggles doing eyeliner, if it's liquid, then getting yourself a brush that works for you and a gel pot liner. I don't know where they went, but gel liner used to be like the be all and end all of makeup. I remember like some of these by MAC that I still have are that old, but you know, these still smell okay. I can still use them. This is a shade black track. I also have a brown, I have a burgundy, I've got a green one from Bobbi Brown. I haven't updated these in a while, but these still are very creamy and they still work. And if I wanna go for that liner look, and especially if you wanna do something more creative, then uh, gel liners are actually good and then you can use a liquid liner to, uh, to intensify it. These set really well if you put eyeshadow on top, so you can also use them as bases. So in terms of versatility, I think a gel liner is perhaps the best way to go. And then we need to talk about single eyeshadow. So let's talk about liquid eyeshadows first. I'm, I have these ones, and I think all three of these are quite recent discoveries. The one that I have, I have had the longest is the multi-chrome liquid shadow from um, Lethal Cosmetics. So this is these are really, really good. I want to get another shade, which has been sold out all the time. It's the shade Cypher. And for Black Friday, they had everything in stock, but the entire shade what had disappeared from their website. So I was like, do they still do that? I don't know, but that's like one of those green gold ones. This is Payload, which is like blue purple. It's really pretty and they're really good. Like I've tried the multi-chrome liquid shadows from Essence, but those I felt weren't very unique or opaque. Then the Glossier Lit Star in the shade Fawn, like this thing, I put this on and it just felt so pretty. To me, it serves a very similar purpose to the taupey shade from Kiko, like the eyeshadow stick. This you can just whack on, and this is a bit more minky taupe. Like it's a taupe, but it's got that lilac-y plum sort of undertone to it. It's got a little bit of sparkle, but not too much. Like if you want that one and done look, this is lovely. By the way, talking about one and done shadows, I'm gonna do a one and done eyeshadow series in my shorts and on my TikTok in uh, January. So every single short I make in January is going to be a swatch and an application of a one and done shadow. That's the plan anyways. I hope I can make it work, but yeah. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite one and done shadows on the lids and swatched out so that we have a good enough idea of what it is that I love in terms of one and done shadows. I thought that could be fun. Um, and then we have Dear Dahlia. I don't, what's the name of this thing? 
can't read it. It's the shade is called Enchanted. Now I love glitters if they're suspended in liquid like this. And I have a couple of the Stila glittering glows, which I still love till this day, but mine are getting a little old, I'm not gonna lie, and they may need either sprucing up or chucking in the bin because they're a bit old. But I now found this from Dear Dahlia. And the best part about this is that it's a clear base. So you can top this over any eyeshadow you're wearing. Whereas with these steel like glittering glows, those do have a base layer. So I feel I always need to like set up the look with matte shadow and then just top that over it. But with this, you can do an entire eye look and then you can just enhance it with a little bit of liquid glitter. And this is really pretty because it's got like different size glitters as well. But yeah, if, if you want to go glitter, I would say as a liquid shadow for sure. If we're talking liquid glitter, those kind of things, um, we also need to talk about pigments, loose shadows. I don't use these a lot, I'm not gonna lie, even though I've got a couple of things that are really pretty, but I've decluttered most of it over the years because I'm just not reaching for it. It's far too messy for the daily. But Max Vanilla, I don't think you can get any more basic than this, but this in the inner corner or like, it's just such a staple to have. And I just, they'd sell this as a mini, which is why I felt not too bad owning that. Then this by JCat, and I believe it's called Mirror Ball. Uh, it's the Vanity Goddess Chromatic Moment Pigment. Something like that. Um, but this shade, is insane. This, maybe I can put it in the one and done shadow thing because this is again how I use that. I don't like. I just pop this on. Maybe a bit of a taupe shade in the in the crease and then just this all over the lid. Looks like you've done a lot of effort and you've only like popped one shade on really. And I feel the same way about comforting lights by Sydney Grace. This is a single uh, a pigment I got as a gift from someone, and this is. It looks like it's got a red undertone. And it does have like a bit of a peachy pink sort of vibe to it, but it's more like a green brown. And I put this in one of my like custom singles videos earlier in the year. And I used this with it almost every single look I did. And I fell in love. I just love that shade. We've talked creams. We've, ta <laughs> we've, we've talked like liquid shadow. We've talked pigments. We've, we've talked about all of those things. So we need to talk about potted eyeshadows as well. Here I have a couple of favorites as well. One of my long-standing OG one and done shadows is by Burberry. I don't think they still make makeup. This is in the shade, uh, oh, what's it called? Rosewood. And this ooh, is great. It's like more of a satiny kind of shade. It's not too shimmery, but it's like that taupey vibe. I really like it. It's still one of those, it's got a dent. I, I just love the thing. I just do, still do. Um, Holika Holika's Moon Flash. Can I show you this without making a mess? It's got one of those little like stoppers, so I hope this doesn't come falling out. It's another taupey shade. You're gonna see a lot of taupe because that's my favorite thing. Um, <laughs> and this is super duper sparkly. It feels wet to the touch, but it's actually a powder shadow. It's really weird. It's been discontinued though. And then the Kiko Glitter Shower Eyeshadows. Now, I also need to give a shout out to Kiko for creating the water shadows. Those are really nice as well, but I, I didn't keep those because the shade shades I had weren't that spectacular. And this, this is shade number one from the Glitter Shower uh, range. I just loved, it's like, it's silver, but it's also taupe. It looks like it's got actual glitter, but once it goes onto the lid, it's just Heinschein Metallic. And, it's very affordable, so loving that. And then we need to talk about potted eyeshadows. So I've got ColourPop Super Shocks here, of course, because where would we be without ColourPop's Ritz? I've hit pan on this. I don't hit pan on shadow, ever. But this, I've hit pan, I've got a backup. I love this thing. This is like that glass wet lid look, and Ritz is just one of my favorites. So that's, that's one that I love. And my other favorite by them is Frog. And I, that one also has a nice size dent. And I actually love pairing Frog with one of the other shadows that I wanted to show you, which is this. This is by H&M Beauty. This is in the shade Dauphine Truffle. They no longer do the shade. I think they still do the product though. This is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. This line by H&M, same texture, 
same formula, but better shade range for me anyways. Um, again, H&M Beauty, I have found out, is made in Italy. Charlotte Tilbury is made in Italy. Could this be the same factory like with Laura Mercier and Kiko? I definitely think so. And guess what? That same factory where Laura Mercier and Kiko are made is where Charlotte Tilbury is made for a bit as well. And Milani, which is why if you look at those lines, there are there's a lot of overlap between them if you look at those products because that factory makes several products for several brands. And this is, I think, another one of them. And then finally, Victoria Beckham Beauty. I bought this this year, so this is quite new to me. But I remember putting this on and going like, yep. This is her Lit Luster in the shade Mink. Now, I could perhaps put the Holika Holika Moonflash shade in this category and then put this in my powder sh category because I feel that these both have that same texture where it could be a powder, but it could be a cream. So I believe they, they call this a powder, the brand itself, but to me it feels like a cream. So that's why I'm putting it with the creams. But yeah, in the Lit Luster in Mink by Victoria Beckham Beauty, very expensive for one single makeup product, but if you're into bougie makeup, you want something that looks really nice on. I used this in a recent full face makeup look and it just looks stunning. It's such a good shade and I love it. I hope you're still here for the ride because now we're going into palettes, but before we get into the eyeshadow palettes, I need to talk single eyeshadows. So I've shown you single shadows in a pot, but I also have single shadows in a pan. So I thought I could do a section where I tell you about my three favorite brands for single potted eyeshadows. So these would be my recommendations for sure. First up, Lethal. I have, I should do it like this because it looks prettier that way. I have two of their white ones, one of their black ones, and one of the black palettes is making its way to me because I did place an order in the end for Black Friday because they had a pretty good deal. Um, and that has some of their pressed multi-chromes in, which I'm very excited to try because that was still something I wanted to try. It was lethal multi-chromes. Um, so in here we have my pinks and purples, my greens, and these are like tealy blues. And Lethal Cosmetics is a German-based indie brand, so if you're in the EU, they're quite easy to get a hold of. They are also sold through Douglas, and I believe there are several retail websites where they stock the brand. So if you can't ship from their website directly, then there are other retailers that stock them. So you can get your hands on them quite easily, I think. And I think Lethal is really one of those brands where everything I've tried for them, I just really, really enjoy. So I thought I had to give them a shout out because I, I keep making one of these palettes for myself every year. Like, this is four years worth of eyeshadow buying then, because I bought a fourth one just now. And I just really love them, and I just really like those shades. I love they do... Like, I don't love their color stories, which is why I stick to their singles, uh, rather than buying their pre-made palettes. But very often, unless it's, like, limited edition, their pre-made palettes get put into their singles collection. So that's what I've actually done with some of these shades that I have, is that I've, like, picked... Like, I've just picked from the uh, line that they had, or like a bundle they were already selling, and I just picked the shades I like the best and then put in a couple of shades that I like better. Um, so you can definitely swap things out. They have a really, really cool tool on their website called the Palette Designer. You can save the palette you create, so especially if you're bored <laughs> and you just need a minute to play around with shadow without having to pay for anything, use their palette designer. It's like a very fun video game and you can build a palette. They have blushes and highlighters you can stick into them as well. They now have lots of different sizes, so palettes by Lethal Cosmetics I think are a great recommendation. I was mentioning multi-chromes, but my favorite multi-chromes are in this palette and they are the square pans that you see here. These are my Cleona multi-chromes. And this is my multi-chrome palette, in case you didn't know. I have a dedicated swatch video with this up on the channel, so I'll make sure to link it down below so you can sw see swatches for all of these things. But yeah, the Cleona ones just take the cake. And the reason why I think Cleona is the be-all and end-all of multi-chrome shadow, not that other brands don't do really pretty things, like I love the other things that are in here as well. Got some JD Glow, some Terra Moon, some Davina, some Touch of Glam. They're really, really pretty shadows, don't get me wrong. But there's no brand like Leona that does so many different shimmers 
or I should say textures within the multi-chrome range. So a lot of brands do these more like jewel to to tone things, but the things I prefer are these more like shimmery ones. My favorite for formula by them are the glitter multi-chromes. Those, like if you truly want ethereal looking eyeshadow, the glitter multi-chromes from Cleona are some of the most stunning things you'll ever find. Cleona makes, like their, um, their stained glass shadows are listed at different price points depending on the pigments used. They do some sales throughout the years. They do regular restocks. It's one of those brands you really need to follow over on their Instagram and they can be up to date. I definitely, like, I have a wish list with them. Like I just saved everything on, uh, on the website as a wish list so that when they have everything in stock at some point in the next year, I can buy myself all of the shades that I was hoping to get. Um, and then the other brand I have to recommend is Sydney Grace. Now the Sydney Gray shadows is like every everything except for like this little corner here. Everything here is Sydney Grace. So the reason why I need to mention Sydney Grace, like Cleona is pretty expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Like if you buy from Cleona, it's going to be quite expensive. Sydney Grace is too because of shipping and handling fees if you're in Europe. They don't like have a shipping deal with a shipping company. They ship by weight, which makes it more expensive. And then you have to pay customs of, on top of that. So that's a bit of a shame. But their eyeshadows themselves are like five, six euros a piece. So that makes it a bit more manageable. They also do regular sales for Black Friday. They are famous for their Christmas in July sale, which they do every July. Um, so I have a couple of that, those shades as well. I'm actually wearing Sydney Grace eyeshadows on my eyes today. So um, yeah, these are just lovely. And I first tried them when I built my blue, green, purple custom palette and loved the quality so much that when I wanted to build myself a cool tone palette, I decided to just stick with what I knew. And these are lovely. And then I got a couple scent and yeah, um, I love, 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 love Sydney Grace for especially their shimmer formula, but their mattes are stunning too. Five more categories left and they're all eyeshadow palettes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, these were tough. I have drugstore palettes for you. And then I have like a section where I'm like, these are kind of drugstore, but depending on where they live, where you live, they may be more expensive. Then I have my favorite indie shadows, my favorite sort of like name brand shadows and then luxury. So we're gonna end with the luxury things. So let me kick things off with drugstore first. So I'm gonna have to give a shout out to e.l.f. I don't keep a lot of drugstore palettes around. That's not because I don't like them, but because a lot of drugstore palettes get discontinued really quickly. So you try something, you review it, and then the next thing you know, you can no longer buy it. But Essence still sells the Earth and Ocean, and it's by far one of my favorite, favorite, favorite eyeshadow palettes I've ever used. And it retails for 15 euros, which, you know, it's not super cheap, but I feel that this is just some lovely eyeshadow. I love the color story. We get some really unique shades in here. Um, it just has some really lovely things. We get a couple of neutrals, a bit of yellow, a bit of green, and lots of lovely blue and cool tones. So yeah, the Elf Earth and Ocean is one I've hung on to for a couple of years now. And I love this. This is definitely a contender to go into a you know, a I need to try this palette again series like thing to go back to it because I love this thing. Sadly, no longer available, but the BH Cosmetics Love in London, I, I just use it again the other day. Like I just sat down and filmed the video where I talked about using this again. And I remembered why I like this so much and why I'm so disappointed that this is the palette, like one of the very few travel palettes that they released originally that they never redid. Now they've had a bit of a rebrand. I don't hear as many talking about BH Cosmetics anymore, but there's still a part of me that's hoping that they'll bring the travel series back and that they'll do an updated rendition of the Love in D London. That's, that's what my hope is. I hope they manage to do that at some point. This is one of my favorite all time palettes, not just at the drugstore, but just period. I think again, I got mine for like 15 or 17 euros at the time. So yeah, this is lovely. It's really, really good eyeshadow. It feels high end and it looks absolutely gorgeous on as well. So now that I've tried this again, I've fallen all over in love with this. So yes, it had to get a mention here. 
And then the next mention I have to give you is Catrice. Now Catrice can be a bit hit or miss when it comes to their eyeshadow formula, but when they released this this fall, I was reminded again how good Catrice eyeshadow can actually be. Now their Disney collabs that they do with Essence, I have found that's not their good eyeshadow quality. Where they do better eyeshadow quality is in this, but because you can no longer get it, I have one that should be more widely available. But yeah, the falling colors, I mean, it's so, so pretty. It looks perhaps a little bit warm tone, but that's because of the like gold background here. So if you cover this up, like, can you see? It's just like rosy and cool tones. It's so lovely, great quality, not just good for the price point. Like I, I like, that's how I feel about both the BH and the ELF and this one as well. It's not just good drugstore makeup. This is good makeup, period. I feel that these three palettes compete with everything else I'm showing you today. But something you should still be able to get no matter where you are is the five in a box soft rose look. I'm showing you this one because this color story I know to still be around. However, my favorite one is modern smoky look, but that has been discontinued in some territory. So I thought I could show you one that should still be available. This is the same lovely Catrice quality. So. Catrice do some good eyeshadow, but you do need to sort of look around for reviews to know what is the good stuff and what is the not so good stuff. The next category is a section that I've dubbed drugstore, but not for everyone. <laughs> so this is the category where I've popped a couple of brands that depending on where you are located in the world, these brands may be very affordable to you, but to other people, they may be more expensive. And then the question is, do you like these enough to spend that kind of money on it? So what am I talking about? I'm talking, for instance, about Juvia's Place. This is their The Topes palette. Now, granted, I haven't tried a Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette in years. Like some of their more recent releases just haven't stood out to me and I haven't like looked into it, but I love some of the Juvia's Place palettes I still have. And many of those are still on their website. I think this one still is, but they're based in the US and even though they used to be sold on Beauty Bay, they've like they've disappeared completely from the EU market and you can only still buy it from their official website if you're not in the US, which is a bit of a shame because it means you have to pay for customs. They do offer a flat rate shipping rate, I believe, of 10 or maybe $15 on your order if you are in the EU, so that makes it a bit more manageable. But it's not one of the brands that where I say, if you're interested in just one palette, get it because it's usually not worth it. However, of course, if you are in the US, you want some good eyeshadow that's not super duper expensive, then Juvia's Place can be good. However, they have upped their prices over time. And I feel that the formula has also changed over time. And nowadays we can perhaps find other like better eyeshadow at this price point as well. Um, now, LA Girl is a brand that you can get in the US a little bit more regularly than where I live, and they're just as affordable as Juvia's Place. So I think that with Juvia's Place, if you wait for a sale and you find exactly what you like, then it's a, a brand that may be worth it, but I don't like, like I love what I have, and that's why I'm putting it in this, this like favorites video. And I feel very similarly about ColourPop. So ColourPop's That Soap has been one of my favorite palettes for a long time. Like that's taupe I've mentioned in so many videos over the years, but it is expensive. If you were to just buy this one palette and you're in the EU, you would have to pay at least 10 euros for shipping and then you need to pay your shipping and handling fees. So the way I like to go about my ColourPop orders is to sort of save up a bit of a wish list wait for them to do a sale, make sure I have just over or closer to like a hundred euros worth of stuff. Um, or at least that I'll qualify for like free international shipping. So I think it's now over 60 euros. And then I feel that the amount of money I end up spending for ColourPop would be what you would pay for it at full retail price if you were in the US. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but that's sort of my reasoning behind it. So I will never ever buy just one palette from ColourPop, never. I will always rope in other products and wait for a sale because else I just feel it's a bit too expensive. Also for the quality you get, I have found ColourPop to be incredibly inconsistent where some products that I've heard people raving about, 
I just felt incredibly underwhelmed by, and I feel it has to do with different batches that you can sometimes get. Um, ColourPop is very inconsistent with their products over time, I find. Um, so if you get the first release, it's going to be great, but if you wait a little while, then maybe they've done something different to the formula, and then you're like, really, this is what everybody was going on about? So that's another downside to it, so I leave it up to you to decide if you find that worth your money. I personally have rearranged most ColourPop color story I own because I feel there's always something lacking. And because they do magnetic pans, they are very easily to rearrange and like move around. So over time, I think this is one of the very few ones I still have intact that I haven't reorganized. So therefore, I do want to come on here and share with you my EU alternative to ColourPop which would be Glam Shop. This is their Coco Sanka, which I believe is being phased out. So if you were to look for like a dupe for that's taupe, this is the closest one I found. This is roughly around the 20 euro mark, which is more expensive than the Colourpop, but also Colourpop has put their prices up over time. And this then comes down to if you were to pay for shipping and handling fees with Colourpop, it, it, this, this would be cheaper. This would be cheaper. Now, if you're in the US, then this is going to perhaps be more expensive because you would have to pay for the shipping and handling fees for ones. But this is stellar eyeshadow. We get a multi-chrome in the middle, which the That's Taupe doesn't even have. Five shimmers, four mattes. I have a couple of their other palettes to still play around with that I have lying waiting for me. And I'm currently going to be trying out some singles that I bought from the brand as well. They do some really, really amazing eyeshadow. And I believe if you're in Poland, you can just get them from the drugstore. Like how cool would that be that you can just walk into a drugstore and find this brand? Now I wanna, I, I wanna take a trip to Poland just to see that. <laughs> just to be able to shop Glam Shop in real life. That would be lovely and it would entice me more so to try some of their base products. So many people have recommended other Glam Shop products to me, but you know, eyeshadow, I feel pretty confident buying online, but things like base products or blushes, like if I don't know the brand very well, I sometimes can be a little bit, hmm. very often I'll like go to a store and then swatch things out or at least look at things in the packaging. And then I decide to like place an order online or something. So with this, I'm always a bit like, hmm, a bit nervous. So let's chat official like indie brands. Cause I think, Technically, I think you could call all three of these indie brands because they're all independently owned and they're not really part of any sort of big conglomeration like an Estee Lauder or anything. So they kind of are drugstore price points and they're a bit more affordable, but they're all in, also indie. But I feel that this is, I think if we think of indie makeup, then this is perhaps a bit more true indie makeup. So I told you there was gonna be a lot of topiness. The cold brew from Kaleidos. I just, I just think I love this. And the reason why I wanted to feature Kaleidos is similar to why I wanted to feature Juvia's Place here. I just had a look in my makeup collection and I was like, well, I actually have quite a lot of Kaleidos palettes. I have the Club Nebula. I have a couple of the Futurism ones. I have all four of the quads. I think it's safe to say that I quite enjoy Kaleidos eyeshadows. So that's why I had to mention them here. Um, they're one of my favorite indie brands in terms of eyeshadow for sure. We're keeping the cool tone train going. I'm just holding up the Mary Jane as an example, but I have quite a few Melt palettes as well. Melt is another indie brand where I'm like, hmm, I have quite a few. And that's why I just wanted to come on here and show you this one. Not everybody loved this. I love mine. I think it's a nice smoky palette, but I can get some neutral things out of this as well. It's got some taupey golden tone taupes at the... Uh, end of the palette that have a bit of a greener undertone, at least on me, and I love a green tone taupe, so that's why I love this one too. Um, Melt does really cool eyeshadow, but they can be a bit more difficult to play with. Melt is not for a beginner, for sure. And I think really, really good uh, color stories and interesting formulas also come from Shroud. I just had a look again through everything that I have in terms of indie, and I'm like, yeah, but the Arcana palette from Shroud, it just stands out so much in my makeup collection. Like, nobody does jewel tones like this palette. Like, 
this. We get the cooler tones on one side, we get the warmer tones on that side. We have a nice like mixing and matching of all of these things. Like you can mix and match it with other palettes, but also within the palettes. Like I just love this thing to death and that's why it had to be featured here. Second to last, I'm gonna have to chat about like what I would call like standard brands. So, you know, your Too Faced, your Anastasia, your Urban Decay, like those brands that a couple of years ago everybody's talking about and I have just fallen a little bit out of love with them. Like I've reorganized some of my Too Faced palettes into one. I'm considering doing the same thing with some of my Anastasia bits um, because I was just looking at the things I've got going on in my makeup collection. I'm like, mm, I'm not sure I love that. So. I just wanted to sort of show you these things and these are things that have been in my collection for a while. These are old, old favorites and that's why I still hold them very near and dear to my heart. But one really old school favorite, the Tarte in Bloom, like this thing, I mean, I keep recommending it. Apparently now these are magnetic too. And I still love this to pieces. Like if I just, if I think of the OG basic palette that I would just recommend to anyone in a heartbeat, it's this one. I still love this thing till this day. It, it stands the test of time, this guy. And what I also think stands the test of time, and this isn't necessarily just this palette, but it's more of a brand mention, like with some of the drugstore options, but Zoeva. Like I know, know so many people did not love Zoeva eyeshadow, and I'm like, but I still love all of the palettes I have by them. And they're doing, they did some really unique things and they were definitely ahead of their time. And I really feel that Zoeva as a brand, like I believe a lot of people in the US got to try them to some, through something like BoxyCharm. And the palette that was sent out in BoxyCharm was one of the weaker ones from Zoeva. It was in their good formula. But I have so many that I love and they did some really unique things. They now do two, and this is the Together We Grow. I decluttered the other one because it wasn't my color story. But in terms of like a neutral palette that can do it all, I mean, it's very reflective, but you get some like greeny cool tones here. We get some warmth, we get the neutral things and then we get some light things to blend things out and have an inner corner highlight. Five mattes, five shimmers. This is so basic, which I feel is why it's overlooked. But I think this is the kind of makeup that if you are a regular makeup consumer and you're not on YouTube and you're not into like navy smoky eyes, this people, try it. It's not super duper expensive. The Tarte is almost twice as expensive as this. This is around a 25, 27 euro mark. The Tarte one is 45, easily. Like this, for what you pay and what you get, like it's sleek, slim packaging. I have a bunch of these, they all sit behind each other. I just wished that the brand had discontinued all of their OG color stories. I really wish they would have kept those around, but they've really sort of veered towards more like vegan, sustainable, so to not overproduce products. That's definitely currently Zoeva's brand strategy, it seems. So I don't foresee them releasing a lot of eyeshadow palettes in the future. I think they're just gonna do like two or three that can cover all the basics. That's what I'm suspecting. So we now have two, maybe we'll get a new one at some point in time, but at the moment, the brand is just focusing on what they do well and do it well, which is very boring in the makeup industry, but I think Zoeva is one of those brands that, especially if you're in the EU, they're a really good brand to look out for. And then, Last but not least, I'm holding up this one because the Urban Decay Naked 2 has been one of my favorite palettes for a long time. However, if you saw my video that went live in November, then you know that this color story is no longer the Naked 2. I've rearranged my Naked 2 and Naked 3 to create my ultimate cool time color story. But I wanted to show this because Urban Decay is one of my OG favorite color, like eyeshadow formulas ever. And so many people hate on Urban Decay, but this is, like with Zoeva, this is buildable, easy to work with. Uh, the Tarte, I feel the same way about. So this, I just kept my favorite shades and I'm doing a project pan with it next year. I'm not gonna do any dedicated videos with this. I'm just going to rope it into a shot my stash, but I have to, I have to recommend this. If, it, if it's favorites time, I can't skip this, I can't.
But the reason why I felt comfortable rearranging that color story uh, for the Urban Decay Naked 2 wasn't just because I also owned a Naked 2 and Naked 3 as backup, so I still have two pristine palettes that, I, that are untouched. <laughs> um, I, that wasn't the only reason, but because I have over time found that there is a newer palette on the market that I feel does a similar thing to the original Naked 2 at an even better quality, but also higher price point. Natasha Denona Glam. This is going to be the final category. These are the bougie luxury options. Natasha Denona, for sure, in terms of eyeshadow, I think that Natasha Denona does some really good eyeshadow quality. The color stories don't always make sense to me, which is why I don't own that many from the line. Um, I now own four of these midi sizes, two of the larger ones, and I think three of the minis. And there's currently nothing by Natasha Denona on my wish list. I have from the brand what I would like to have. So yeah, Natasha Denona in terms of eyeshadow formula, I think if you want to up the ante from like a Tarte or an Urban Decay, Natasha Denona is the place to be, especially the midi size palettes. The mini size, if you just want to have a gander, you don't just want to give it a try for sure. Um, but the midi sizes, I think is, if you want a full palette, find the color story that appeals to you the most. These are removable because they can pop out here on the back, so you can rearrange the color stories. And if you have a few of these, it's going to be very easy to create your own palettes as well. But I've mentioned this brand quite a lot in recent years as well, ever since I got a bit more into them. The Viseart formula is one of my favorites as well that is a bit more luxury. And the reason why I do call them luxury is these palettes, because they are so small, they feel like they're gonna be very expensive, and especially when Viseart first launched, they only had those really big uh, 80 euro palettes, which came with a ton of shadows, but they're very much aimed at professional makeup artists. And they've now taken the brand more so towards the consumer market with smaller things like the Kashmiri, the Petit Pro line, uh, the Petit Four that they do. I have a couple of Viseart's palettes still on my wish list. I hope to get them some point next year. I'm in no rush, I'm in no hurry. Um, but the Cashmere has been my favorite neutral tone palette by them. I love the Violette Etendue. I love my pro palettes, uh, Petit Pro palettes, I should say. I have one of, um, one of the Petit Fours and I finally started to understand why everybody was raving about this brand. Now granted, I have found out through doing some videos in the past couple of months that Viseart is actually not as expensive as I had like registered in my brain. Like in my brain, I find these a, I find them a luxury brand, but this retails for around 45 euros and you get as much eyeshadow as in the Tarte. So they're roughly the same price point, but this packaging is just so much cuter, like, and so much more easy, like so much easier to manage as well. Um, and these pans are also removable, which again means that if you have a couple of these, you can very easily customize your color stories if you'd like. Um, I have not felt the need to do that with my Viseart. I feel that Viseart has really good bang on, right smack on the money color stories that I just love with all my heart. So that's why I had to give Viseart a shout, a shout out as well. And last but not least, we can't get any bougier than Miss Pat. So I love Pat McGrath eyeshadow, but I don't love everything I've tried. In fact, I think the next time I'll do, do a declutter next year, I'm gonna be decluttering some of my Pat McGrath stuff, especially the motherships. Because I have just found that the mothership color stories, just not all of them work for me. And I did decide to buy the Moonlit Seduction in the end in the Black Friday sale because it had a, they had a really good deal. I ended up paying 80 euros for a mothership instead of like 128. That's a good deal. And I was really interested in that color story. So I did end up buying that. But I think that where it's at with Pat McGrath is her quads. Like her looks quads are so nice. This is the Fleur Vixen. That's what I call it. It's not, that's not what it's called. It's the Venus in Fleur's looks quad in Voyeuristic Vixen. I call it the Fleur Vixen. That's how it's in my brain. This is so lovely. The problem with Pat McGrath is that everything is incredibly warm toned. So it, it can take a little while for you to find color stories that work for you. And that may be a bit expensive of a mistake to make because these aren't cheap. But I feel that some, like the quads I feel are far more versatile. And I've had a lot more success with finding color stories I love than the larger things. 
So fair bit of warning here. And these of course are not as super duper expensive as the motherships. I think that, you know, getting a Pat McGrath quad or getting a Charlotte Tilbury quad or a Dior like Quintet is like roughly around the same price point. These are like what, 55, 60 euros? That's it for this video. I have shared all of my favorites with you right now from my base products, my cheek products, my lip products, and now eyes. And then we're gonna end this video here. But that doesn't mean I'm done talking about favorites because of course I need to talk about my 2022 favorites as well. So between Christmas and New Year's, that's exactly what I've got going on on this channel as well. And what may also be good to know, if you've seen anything here that you like, then definitely check out the description box. There's going to be a link there to that which is called shop my favorites that's what it says and then you can click the link and you can click all of you can shop from all of my favorite products it's an affiliate link program that i'm doing that with so you can choose whether you want to spend your money through that or whether you want to do it in another way but yeah i just thought i could come on here and let you know about some of my favorite products again so i really hope you enjoyed watching today's video Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week and I have a lot more content coming your way. So see you in my next video. Bye-bye.